The reason why we've um, invested in the purchase of the MGS was really due to marketing reasons. The tin market in the world has contracted substantially and we have to have very good concentrates to be able to sell them. When a crisis occurs, it's usually too late for a mine to react. And that uh, unless a mine is in fact looking at all the improvements and new technology that's available, and in fact testing them, and going quite a long way down the road with these various ideas, that unless they're doing that, if a crisis does occur and hit them, um, they won't have enough time to react. So the crisis that faced them was how to produce a new product for which there was still a market. Their first option was to do nothing. That's the cheapest option of all on day one. Spend no money, do nothing. The result is that you get less money for your product. In Carnan's case, the smelters may still have bought their low-grade product, but at a reduced price. And at that reduced price, Carnan's life would be limited. The introduction for the machine really came from Richard himself. When he had a full operating model, um, he suggested that it would be an ideal tool for our final concentrate cleaning. And we've worked from that stage, um, listened to what he said, looked at the results that we were able to achieve on his pilot scale model. And in fact, prior to actually purchasing the machine, Richard had one of his early models, which we actually put into circuit, so we could fully test it, bring up the uh, full set of results and statistics so that we could then quantify and prove to ourselves to a very high degree of um, certainty that the machine would do um, what was being claimed for it on our particular ore. Well, to have the, the machine um, installed on site, yeah, there are many benefits. Uh, for a start, uh, you can run the machine continuously uh, at the full load full throughput and you can uh, do the various sampling uh, um, whenever you want and uh, the plant itself has got excellent facilities. It was very easy to be aware of the progress of the development of the machine and then it was quite easy to sort of say well if we're going to trial anything we want to trial something that we can have very close collaboration with. It was set to work, it worked for about six months and it broke down of course and there was a lot of learning curve on that machine um, but it did mean that um, the results were recognised as being uh, of crucial importance to the mine. We were then able to um, build a new machine specifically for them. Although there were initial teething problems due to um, certain products coming through we've been able to get over those very quickly again due to the close collaboration um, with Richard on the um, process side. In Wheel Jane's case at the outset, their part was simply being brave enough to permit the new technology onto their plant and to continue to work towards having it solve their problem. When the machine was first installed, the initial re reaction, which uh, was not unexpected, is uh, that they do not want to see change, uh, which is quite um, typical uh, in every plant, I would say. There are instances where um, we've gone to a mine and we've done actually tests with their material and shown a really quite a, a marked improvement that we can make. They actually are then aware, and perhaps more uh, than they were before, that they do have a slight recovery problem or grade problem. They've um, beefed up their production and said, no, thank you, we don't need you. But what the, the great tragedy is that they haven't said, taking both of our efforts together, then we could have really made an enormous improvement. An innovative company provides input into the relationship in new ideas, overcoming problems that are specific to, to each individual plant. Just because this machine works in this plant like so, <clears throat> it doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to work exactly the same in any other plant. It's horses, of course. But this is why you need an innovative company to be able to assist you. And you want this type of assistance. You want backup. You want, if you've got a problem, them there to help you. You, you begin to learn more about their, their process 
and they of course learned in parallel more about yours and uh, it, it this is the way it works this is where the the partnership and the um, cooperation can pay off and uh, and of course the equipment that you're developing you know you, you never develop a piece of equipment just purely in a laboratory and then you go along and say that's it it's got to actually be exposed to the real life not only the actual uh, metallurgical results that you're looking for but the actual mechanical reliability because the, the machine's got to be accepted not just by the, the, met, the plant metallurgists who want this or that grade this or that recovery but um, you know all the the different um, if you like artisans in the mine are going to be interested in what you're doing there's the electricians the mechanical engineers and so on they're all going to be looking at it and of course they're also going to be looking at the the bottom line what's it going to cost we commissioned this new machine we were immediately able to turn town water off our column and cleaner flotation section with a saving immediately of something of the region of three thousand pounds a month and subsequently discovered that we could increase our concentrate grade from an average of 50% tin on the column to 55% tin using the Mosley multi-gravity separator. Any new piece of equipment, because it's, really, it's one off, one off always, costs quite a lot to make. And this is another thing that uh, mining companies often find difficult to reconcile. And I've had some quite, you know, hilarious conversations with people uh, when um, I've said, well, this piece of kit of mine, which weighs three tons or something, uh, costs £80,000. Uh, the mining company on one occasion said, I could buy a three-bedroom brick uh, house in Melbourne for that. And uh, you sort of say, yes, I suppose you could, but, um, you know, uh, it's not going to solve your problem, even though it's maybe a very nice brick house in Melbourne that you're buying for £80,000. So there is always a, a problem of people understanding the, um, the actual, what they're buying. Because um, obviously his price for, a, for an article um, reflects not just its manufactured cost, but the, um, the cost of actually the development that went into making that article. And of course, there must be an element of profit that is to be used for the development of further technology in the future. So we've got a machine now, in summary, that um, is giving us 100% availability to date. We are benefiting in that we're getting higher concentrate grades, which um, as far as tin processing is concerned, is the name of the game nowadays. Both parties to any sort of partnership and cooperation have got to survive and have got to make money. And um, ultimately the, the, uh, the partnership will only succeed if both sides feel that they're getting their be best return. And um, I think that the, the mining companies um, are going to be satisfied by um, such a partnership, um, although in some cases the, the, the time involved may be too long for them. Um, most commercial operations now are operated by um, by various rules accountants uh, say you know we've got to get our our money back in a certain time and very often innovation does in fact take a lot longer if we didn't have the the increased um, concentrate grade that we're a, we're achieving from the MGS it would make our the marketing of our concentrates a lot more difficult it's Difficult to go further than that to say that we wouldn't be able to market them if we didn't have the machine. But certainly um, we found it very easy to renegotiate our contracts uh, for this forthcoming year um, with a certain knowledge that we could offer higher grade concentrates. We've actually gained something in the region of 1-2% to 2 economic recovery, that's recovery multiplied by our net smelter return. And as a consequence of that, the machine has paid for itself um, or the new machine has paid for itself in a very short period of time indeed, a matter of months. We are now settling down to fine-tune the machine um, because I think we can actually get better results from it, um, which will come with time as we 
uh, do some further test work and some further experimentation. Well, I think in the wheel chain experience that we had, which we just talked about, the um, we really were a lifeline and the the economic significance of the machine was between uh, success or failure of their whole operation. The um, results that it gave meant that they could sell their um, their tin at the grade that they uh, wanted to and they not only could uh, achieve that grade that was re required, they actually made enormous savings in their operation after they put it in. and. Um, it gave them benefit all down the line. And of course now we're looking at some new, some new uh, ideas as well. So we haven't stopped. Nothing ever stops. You know, we've got to always keep going.